Hi everybody, I'm Eric Baldwin, and this is improvisation video number one. If you go to my website, bolvinmusic.com, you can download the sheet music for any instrument that goes with this video, as well as the band and box file that we're going to be using, and an MP3 of that file if you don't have band and box, so you can play along at home. All right. This is a beginning improv video, but if you're, you know, advanced and you want to get some new ideas going, you might be in the right place. Also, if you're a teacher of improv, this might give you some new ideas on how to convey some of these concepts to your students. When people learn to improvise, especially in jazz, they're given a scale, like let's say the Dorian mode, and, you know, an accord, and they're asked to play over that. Um, the problem with that is that what you get is people playing scales. They look at the piece of paper and they start playing the scale up and down and um, they don't really develop a good feel for improvising right away. I think it's most important to work on your time and your phrasing before you actually get into playing a million notes. Now, we can hardly blame people because when we hear jazz, what do we hear? We hear a lot of notes a lot of times, a lot of, a lot of bebop and stuff. I remember when I first heard Clifford Brown, I didn't even know it was improvised. And I went down to our local uh, sheet music store, the Clef House in Saratoga, California. And I asked them if they had the music for Clifford Brown's Delilah. And they looked, like me like, they looked at me like I was from another planet. So... What we hear sometimes is a lot of notes, but not all improvised music is that way. The concepts that I'm going to give you work in jazz, rock, the blues, funk, even classical type improvisation. Okay, so we're going to use a concept that I call the three note scale. And that's the sheet music that you can download from the site. I think that within a key, not every note is equal. And this is what I call note usage. Every note has a color. Every note has a different feel to it, a different sound. Within a key, you can have many notes, but each one has a little voice to, of its own. And we, it's hard to describe these sounds verbally. I'm going to attempt to do that, but really you don't have to be able to. You just have to develop your own feel for each note in the key. And it's easy if we start with just three notes. So line three is the three note scale. We're going to introduce the root, and that's the note G. Okay, to me the root is a very solid tone. It's it's the it's the core note, it's it's the you know, it's the root. It's home base. Okay. Flat three is what's called the blue note in a in, in any key, a minor key or a major key. This is a minor key. And I think it resolves well down to the one, and it has that kind of bluesy, funky feeling to it. The same can be said of the flat seven. Now notice, we're not introducing the scale here, we're keeping the root kind of in the middle of things, where it should be. All right? So, resolve to the root, and, and you know, all your ideas kind of revolve around that note. All right? This is just to start off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play 16 bars, just on three notes, all right, just to get a feel for these three notes and to get a good feel of phrasing. And we're going to have a little help from Ben in the box. that whole time. Notice I don't have to play all the time. Okay, so if you're starting off improvising, don't feel that you have to fill up every single moment of music with sound. You really don't have to. It's best to leave as much space. In fact, I don't like to think of things as, as a solo. 
Forget that you're soloing. Be part of the band. What you play, make it complementary to what's already going on. Make yourself part of the band and part of your surroundings and improvise to that. And it'll, it'll be a lot better for you. You don't have to play a million notes all the time. Okay, we're now going to add another tone to our scale, line four. And this is going to introduce the fourth. Okay, the fourth is kind of an ambivalent sound, although in a minor key, all the, the, the notes in the first five notes are very, um, they, they work together very well. Okay, and um, all right, so here I go. I'm going to play a few bars for you. I'm just going to use four notes. You can do the same thing at home. scales and minor pentatonic. been kind of, uh, you know, they, they all work really well, it's because it's a pentatonic scale, and um, when you get to number six, is when you can really hear the difference in, in how certain notes within a key sound different. We're going to add the ninth, which is the second note in the scale. I call it the ninth because it's more of an extension of, of the scale. The ninth is going to introduce a completely different color to what we're doing. And... Um, I call it, it's kind of a pretty color, and it's, it's an extended sound. Some people might think it's a little bit dissonant. All right, play around now with the ninth. See how you can make melodies around that note. It works really well. So you can hear what the ninth sounds like. That's a cool sound. So when you introduce that note in your solo, you know kind of what you're doing and what you're saying. You're adding a color to the whole musical happening. All right. Finally now, we've made it to the whole Dorian mode, okay? And um, we're going to introduce the sixth. The sixth is a really amb ambivalent kind of a note. Um, you can use it in passing, and... Um, it, it has kind of an, uh, an off-color kind of a sound to it. It's, it's kind of the weakest note of all the scale. Okay, so I introduced that one last. All right, here we go. This is the entire scale now, but I'm going to focus on using my different sounds and different colors.
So that six, he's kind of a he's kind of a funky note, and you, and you kind of got to know how to use that note. And when you use it right, it's very effective. Okay, so at the bottom of the page now you have the entire chord, the G minor seven chord, and the G Dorian mode. And now you have a little you know clue on what how to use different notes and and how those different colors can help you in in learning how to improvise. All right, next up. In video two, we'll talk about the blues, and in video three, we'll talk about the altered scale. Thanks a lot.